What's going on, people? I've been noticing some things um, for quite a while now when it comes to many preachers and even so-called believers in Christ. We're living in entirely serious, crucial times now. Extreme crucial times. When your faith is going to be tested like never before. Things that you never thought was possible is now making itself to be possible. Especially preachers. There are so many preachers that Tasted of the heavenly gift. They were pastors. They operated in the spirit realm. And even those that have not operated in the spirit realm, but yet had reached a level where after they became pastors and after they attended seminary school, was privy to see the sufferings, the real sufferings, of people and they were not able to handle that type of revelation and in seeing that it overthrew them and they started questioning God as to why would God allow those things to take place they started charging God foolishly when it had nothing to do with God, but everything to do with being human and having a human experience here on earth. And I'll speak on that in a few minutes, but I want to go over some comments that was made on a video that I made in 2021. The title of that video was, Christian Satanists, true Satanists, will never convert to Christianity. Christian Satanists, true Satanists, will never convert to Christianity. And it's interesting at the number of comments, or better yet, the type of comments I received. Because... There are so many so-called Christians or people that claim to believe in God that are now dabbling into the unseen arts. Many of which, unaware, are operating in the spirit realm. So how can you operate in the spirit realm without knowing it or without, without realizing it? Because just like many Christians... They may read books, they may read the Bible, they may hear certain lingos to whatever faith or belief they practice, and they just stay there on that realm, but yet you have the unseen realm that's peeking in, and it start messing with their minds. They start becoming depressed. Their eyes are now taken off the prize and they start looking at the suffering of people and all the negative things while in their own personal lives. They have things going on that's justified and unspoken of. But to start with the comments, and I noticed that these comments are coming from females, especially in the so-called black community. And these are the ones that rail and speak out against the church, the Bible, God, and Christianity the most. I find that to be quite interesting, and you wonder why the so-called black Americans are in the condition that they are in today. But here's some of the comments. One person by the name of Deborah Niles said he showed me himself And I was an unbeliever. And so I responded and asked, 
How did he show you? And then she responds and says, God can convert anyone he wants to. So she never answered my question. The second person is from Zaniel. Jayane. J-I-Y-A-N-E. That's the last name. And then this person says, so much scripture twisting. And then Vonda Bush says, you need to read your Bible again and again. Hod, H-O-D, and I'm sure she meant to say God, can save anyone he wants to. And then she goes on to say, who made you God to be able to judge? You must not have discerning spirit. God is all powerful. Yes, God is all powerful. And I'm going to deal with that. And then Jeanette Herrera says, God can use anyone. Paul murdered Christians. You're not speaking about my God. Now, I knew someone would mention about Paul. But you have to understand, Paul was not a warlock. He was not a wizard. He was not a witch. He did not follow Satanism. Paul persecuted Christians and killed Christians because he thought that he was doing God a service. See, Christianity was new at that time. And see, Paul thought that he was killing Christians. But yet, if you notice, when Yeshua or Jesus showed Paul himself, Paul immediately submitted. When he was on the road to Damascus and he showed himself. And he says, I am Jesus who you persecute. Paul immediately submitted and did what Yeshua wanted him or requested him to do. So Paul was not evil. Paul was not an enemy of God. So I want to ask a question. When did God in the Bible ever save his enemy? And don't say Paul. Because Paul or Saul was not an enemy of God. When did God ever save his enemy? I'll wait. Now, I'm going to go to the scriptures. Now, keep those comments in mind. And these are people that's trying to justify Satanism. Now, in the Bible, according to Matthews, the 12th chapter, reading the 31st and the 32nd verse, it reads as follows. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. The 32nd verse says, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That's what the Bible says. But you have all of these, these so-called Satanists and witches that claim that God forgave them, that God's grace was sufficient for them when they've many times blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. In their satanic practices, in their witchcraft, in whatever dark arts they dabbled into, they blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. But yet, at the same time, these are people, that spirit that's controlling these individuals, deceiving these individuals, 
are using them as messengers of Satan because their goal is to prove God's word a lie. So that means that if God forgave a witch and saved the witch or God saved a Satanist and they are now considered ex-Satanists and they're allegedly sharing their testimonies, then that means God's word is void and of no effect because God said that a witch shall surely die. God's word says not to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and that you are not forgiven in this world and in the world to come. You won't be forgiven. So for a Satanist, and a witch to say that God saved them and they are now considered ex-witches and ex-Satanists, you're saying that God's word is a lie. You're saying that it's okay in your stupor to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost and then God will forgive you because he's all-powerful. He's merciful. He's forgiven. And these are the words that Satanists use or the power of darkness use to deceive those that are without knowledge and for those that don't have the discernment of God. So by saying that God is all powerful, that he, he loves, and that's another uh, word that the Satanists use, love, you know, when they want to deceive. So you have pastors that are pastoring churches and then all of a sudden they become aware that all that they've been teaching and preaching is wrong. But yet at the same time, while railing against the Bible and railing against the church and telling you to come out of the church, they have not closed that church where they were preaching. They still use that pulpit to publish and minister for Satan. But yet you're thinking that they have the same faith that you have. Like Carlton Pearson. He's one that now is preaching that hell is not real. Hell don't exist. And he said many things. Blasphemy is against the Holy Spirit. And yet recently, as a, as a matter of fact, today I saw a video where he was in a church and he was shouting. What is that about? So according to Matthew, the 12th chapter, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against. Now keep in mind, this is saying that whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. So you can speak against Christ. And it's okay, you'll be forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So while you're a witch or a warlock or a Satanist and you're blasphemy against the Holy Spirit of Yah, you're speaking evil against the Most High, and then now you want to convert and you claim that now Yeshua spoke to you or God spoke to you and, and now you're saved and God is merciful and you try to use the Most High's word to deceive folk, just like the serpent did when he came to Yeshua after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And he even came with the word. For it is written, God shall give his angels charge concerning you to bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. He came at Yeshua with the word. For it is written. 
So do you think that he won't do the same thing to you? So you have these people that weren't called by God. That now one day decide to go to seminary school, to cemetery school. And become enlightened and now they want to preach and teach. And then later they find out that God really didn't call them. And their pride steps in the way and they're too prideful to step down. So they start railing out against the church. They rail out against the Bible. They rail out against the Most High. And then they start following vain teachings. I want to read another scripture taken from the book of Jude. The fourth chapter. Reading the fourth verse. And it reads as follows. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Now, how do they creep in? They creep in speaking your language. They adopt your customs. They may shout. They may say hallelujah. They may say praise God. And I've seen it many times over where they would come into church and you got thugs and gangbangers and drug dealers that would come into church with their Bible in their hand and they would swing it in the air and jump up and down and pretend to be like those that's been in the church most of their lives or those that claim to be saved. And you have those members of that church that's seeing this drug dealer. They seen him out on the street and now they're thinking that God is dealing with him. And some of the old women may even walk up to him after church and say, God is really going to use you, young man. But they don't realize that that spirit is there to deceive. That's how they creep in because then the church will receive them because God forgives everyone. And then the next thing you know, this person's in the pulpit deceiving people, collecting money, you know, and then you got people that come in and they see that. And now all preachers are just money hungry. They only want your dollars. And that's one of the number one things they target is money in the church. But the scripture says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. These are people that crept in unaware. They came with the hallelujahs and praise God and, you know, and the Lord saved me. But when you look at their lifestyle, it doesn't match up. And then they tell you God is just dealing with me. And constantly deceiving you. So, don't be deceived. Many of these so-called preachers that all of a sudden fell from grace. The ones that say that God called them, God spoke to them, God gave me a prophetic message, a prophetic message for you. And he told me to tell you to give me a thousand dollars and then you gave your thousand dollars. Some of you even gave up the deeds to your home, to your, to your vehicles. Because you looked at this as the man of God because he came with fancy words and he was uh, waving his hands and he had on the prophetic or the, the, uh, the prophet robes and garments. See, people are deceived by garments. They're deceived by um, positions and titles. Bishop. See, you talk about Bishop Whitehead, but... There's a market out there for people that follow bishops. Because bishops seem deep. And a lot of these so-called bishops got their credentials online. Paid the price. They didn't go to a real seminary school. or They didn't come through a church. But they created themselves or they were created by someone that created themselves. So 
There's a lot of deception that's going on that's deceiving people and taking you for your money. And then you have people that would defend them when someone like myself would come and tell you the truth. You know, these are these certain men that crept in unawares. And they're preaching that prosperity gospel. So now you have all of these, these, these rainbow dudes. You have Larry Reed. You have Bishop Whitehead. In my own humble opinion, he's down low. You can see it. You can hear it in his videos. That's why you have these, these homosexuals that's calling themselves bishops are going back and forth at each other. Larry Reed, he used to be, from what I understand, he used to be a minister, a pastor. Then you have this other dude that's going back and forth. He was also at one time a pastor, maybe still is. And these are men that's got wives. And don't be deceived. They may have wives. They may have children. But that's just all a front. It's a front. Larry Reed talks about his wife. And Bishop Whitehead talks about his wife and their children. A lot of that is a front. I remember there was a time, especially in Kojic and Church of God in Christ, where they, were, uh, they wouldn't allow um, young men or certain churches wouldn't allow young men to be preachers unless they were married. They had to have a wife. You know, they didn't want them to fall into temptation and adultery and fornication because they're single. They're vulnerable. So then there were certain dudes that went out and start finding wives. You know, and then you got women that that that's got a thing for men in position. You know, and then they marry these guys because these guys have a title. They're a preacher, they're a bishop, they're a pastor. Or things didn't go the way they wanted them to go in their home church. So they decided to go out and start their own thing. God spoke to them and not their pastor. So God is dealing with my heart. I got to go out and start my own church. And that's what they do. That's how they become bishop. Starting their own thing. So don't be deceived by these, 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 these guys that seem to be a part of the LGBTQ community. Having wives. Because a lot of these so-called wives are aware of who and what their husbands are. But they have an agreement. They have an arrangement with each other. And in many times when things go left and that marriage dissolves itself, then that woman will come out and now expose that so-called pastor that she was married to for so many years and gave birth to his, his children. Right? I was going to say spawns, but gave birth to this, to his children. Right? So now she's going to come out and expose him and talk about how gay he was. But this is something she already knew because they had an arrangement together. So don't be deceived. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemn condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. The next scripture is taken from the book of Mark, the seventh chapter, reading the seventh to the thirteenth verse. How be it in vain do they worship me? I'll read that part again. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? See, they left the word of God. And see, that's why a lot of these so-called pastors or ex-pastors or these ex-Christians that decide to follow something else, that's why they speak so evil against the Bible, because the Bible condemns their lifestyle. They can't live up to what the scripture says. 
or they refuse to live up to what the scripture says. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for lying, for laying aside the commandment of God. I repeat that, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandment of God. Ye reject the commandment of God. Ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. In the 10th verse it says, for Moses said, Honor thy father, and this is an, is an example. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whoso curses father or mother, let him die the death. In the 11th verse it says, But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is korban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. The 12th verse says, And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother. And I spoke on this in the past, how everybody prays the mom, forgives the mom for whatever she did, doesn't matter what she does. She can almost abort you. And somehow, by the grace of God, you live, but yet you'll forgive her later in life. She'll desert you as a child or put you up for adoption, but yet you'll forgive her later in life. But if the father leaves you, you can't forgive him. You hold that against him. You can't stand him. You hate him. And because you hate him so much, now you decide to hate the whole male population. And don't trust them. No man is no good no more because of what your dad did. Your father wasn't there for you. You can't forgive him. So the balances are tilted. It says that ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God. And this is the verse I want you to hear because this is what you find many of these so-called ex-preachers and ex-Christians are saying. These are the ones that grew up in the church. Their mother and father is a pastor. They used to be preachers. And now all of a sudden, because of the fact that something spoke to them or they read some new knowledge, now making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things ye do. So you have these Demonic pastors that was never called by God in the first place. They weren't sent. They went on their own. They turned God's word into a lie by saying, I used to be a Satanist or I used to be a warlock or witch or followed African traditions and voodoo. And now God forgave me after I blasphemed against him or against the Holy Spirit. I spoke so much ill against God's Holy Spirit. So now he forgives me. So now I'm an ex-Satanist. I'm an ex-witch. God forgave me because he's merciful. He's all powerful. Yes, he is all powerful. He is merciful. But he said in his word that all manner of sins shall be forgiven and blasphemies except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And you will not be forgiven in this world nor the world to come. But yet you blasphemy against the Holy Spirit while being a Satanist or while being a witch, spoke evil against the Holy Spirit, against the Most High, against God's people, against his word. And now all of a sudden you're saved and you're pastoring a church and you're divining lies, calling yourself a prophet. See, so don't be deceived. And it's sad because so many in the church today don't have the discernment of God. Don't have the spirit of God, never been filled with the Holy Spirit, never even been cleansed by the word. 
but you say you say. You say that you're sanctified. You said that you feel with the Holy Spirit, but yet you're speaking out against God. So the 13th verse says, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such things or like things ye do. The next scripture is taken from the book of Revelation. The first chapter, reading the, 21st, the 25th verse, and it reads as follows. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. I'll read that first part again. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. See, this is what you find many of these, these preachers, preachers or ex-preachers are doing. Like I spoke on earlier, how Carlton Pearson is talking about hell don't exist. Talk about the things that, that, that the church is doing or the things that you were taught and you're taught wrong and now you're inviting homosexuality and all these other ills that the Bible speak out against, it's now okay according to you. You're changing the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. That creature is that man that committed an abomination against the Most High. So now you're serving that community. By saying it's okay and God saves that community and God loves that community. You're saying that that person shall not be punished for the abomination that they committed because God is loving and kind. So you're changing the truth of God into a lie. And worshiping and serving the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. And then it says, Amen. The last and final scripture I want to read is taken from the book of Exodus, the 22nd chapter, reading the 18th to the 20th verse. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So let me ask you a question. If God is merciful, and God is just and he's loving, he's forgiving, he's all powerful, and he can forgive anyone that he wants to forgive. Why would the scripture tell you that thou shalt not suffer or allow a witch to live? So this is the most high wishing death upon a witch because the witch the Satanist the warlock those who practice dark arts are the enemies of God so why would the Most High save his enemies how many of you will give your enemies something to eat how many of you would allow an enemy to stay in your house around your family and your children? Now wait. How many of you forgave your enemies, although they're still tormenting you and trying to wish harm on you and your children? So why do you expect God to do something that you yourself won't do? So the 18th verse says, thou shall not suffer a witch to live. Whoso lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. And then maybe this is another video or a topic I might deal with is bestiality. Trust and believe that happens within the church. See, you have to understand that the church, the church doesn't have, how could I say this? Not everyone in the church is perfect. 
When you find that perfect church and you join that perfect church, that church is no longer perfect because now you're there. Right? So there's no perfect church out there. There's people that's going to be doing wrong. There's people that are homosexual. There's people that are uh, prostitutes and and there's people that's uh, murderers and drug dealers and adulterers. And right in the pulpit, there's preachers that sleep with their members, husbands and wives. That's messing with children. You're going to find that in the church. They're in the right place. That's the place to receive your deliverance. If that's the correct ministry. Not every church, not every ministry is of God. Like I just mentioned, you have those that went and were not sent. See, the Bible says you would know them by the fruit they bear. And that's not talking about going out and giving away free turkeys. See, because they can still give out free turkeys. And then sleep with your wife or your husband. And now you have females that's in that's flocking to the pool pit. Right? They flock to the pool pit and then after they finish getting all the, the members and now they want to speak out against the Bible and the church. And see, I think in many cases too, that's also in the demonic realm because you have uh, demonic spies come into the church and they would uh, get information from the church. They see how you worship. They see the things you do. Uh, they will counsel you. They will marry you. And then after they finish getting all that intelligence, they speak out against you. And so you wonder how the, 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 the demonic realm knows so much about you and your family. I've been in services where demons spoke out against preachers and members. Was telling all their business. Didn't even know this person. The person that the demon was speaking to didn't even know the people they were speaking out against. But this demon spoke out through this individual and was telling on that person. Put all their business out in the street. Said what they were doing behind closed doors. How do you think these demons are getting this intelligence? Because they got spies within the church. And many of these spies now are bold and they're revealing themselves. They're telling you who they are. When I watch Larry King live and you have all of these females and males in the comment section railing out against the church, the Bible and God. And these are supposed to be preachers. But Larry would come out and he would joke and jest and clown. And the Bible tells you about joking and jesting. See, clowns are demonic. And a lot of people don't realize that clowns are part of the demonic kingdom or the satanic kingdom. Clowns are. You know, Bozo with the with the lip, the red lips and the makeup. They're part of the demonic kingdom. So these clowns, these they these they get crept in, they played the role of a Christian. They're not saved. They're not filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet they have a discernment to know that you're not right. And they know exactly what to do after sitting down, counsel you because now they're pastors and they're calling themselves prophetess like Juanita Bynum. Right. And I think that there are preachers out there that do fall astray, that they are sincere and that God might have spoke to them. But then when they start really operating in the spirit realm. Um, the satanic kingdom got things out there that would blow your mind. And that's why the Bible says that in these last days, if it be possible, if it be possible, the very elect of God will be deceived. See, that's how strong, that's how deep the spirit realm is. So even when you start talking about your spiritual you know, you have all this spirituality and your eyes are now open and whatnot. Your eyes are actually being closed. Especially if you operated in the spirit of God and you've seen God work through you. You've seen people's souls are saved. And now the, de the devil starts speaking to your mind and start putting doubts and questions in your head about the church, about the Bible. Then you start questioning, why is this? Why is that? Why is this? 
Why is that? Why is this? Okay, God is not real. Why would he allow this to happen? Especially when you see people suffer. Or you see children suffer. Or maybe somebody in your family just do what is natural and die. Why did God allow this to happen to my mother? Why did God allow this to happen to my grandparents? She was faithful in the church. She gave her tithe. And see, that's one thing that people like to dwell upon is the money you gave. They gave money. Money means nothing to God. Money means nothing to God. But God will use money to test you. And many preachers are now being tested in the spirit realm and they're failing. Because you got people that's like Carlton Pearson. That's now dealing with his own demons. Right? So it's a test. This is no more than a test. Do you think God is going to allow you to skip right into paradise without a test of your faith? You know, we preach about Job and what Job went to. You know, and he lost his friends. He lost his family. His children were partying. And a uh, fire cave, cave, then something happened. All his kids died and whatnot. Then you had his friends or the church folk coming saying like, hey, you know, it must be something you did. Some sin you committed. You know, but Job, he did not charge God foolishly. He stuck in there. And many of you that claim that God called you are not sticking in there. You're giving up. You gave the satanic kingdom victory. And you give up God and now you start talking about how free you feel. Because you let all that weight go. Well, what did you think Yeshua was feeling when he was on that cross? And they were casting lots, gambling at the foot of the cross. And then you got somebody next to you that's dying along with you saying like, well, hey, you saved everybody, save yourself. Where's your power at now? Right? But he endured even unto death. And God raised him up again. The last scripture, the last verse is the 20th verse. It reads, He that suffered, he that sacrifices unto any God, save or accept unto the Lord only, he shall. Be utterly destroyed. I'll read that final verse again. He that sacrifices unto any God, doesn't matter if it's an African God or your ancestors or Wicca or whatever you choose to in the church. Because yes, you have people that's operating in witchcraft in the church. You have people in the church that are that are using witchcraft or roots against the pastor. Got him under control. Or they use it against the pastor because he's preaching what they don't want to hear. He's not heeding to their itching ear. So the Bible says, He that sacrifice unto any God, except unto the Lord only, he shall or she shall be utterly destroyed. Does that sound like a forgiving God that forgives his enemies? Name one enemy in the Bible where God forgave. Just one. One enemy where God forgave him. Don't exist. So feedback, tell me what you think. Subscribe. Until next time. I'm fearless.